Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. My wife, 34 female and I, 36 male, have been having issues. We've known one other for a long time. I married about seven years ago. We just had our first kid as a couple. She has gradually gotten more and more limiting of my behaviors and activities over the years, particularly following the birth of our kid. We both work full-time and have most of the same days off. I have two children from a prior marriage, and she also has one child from a previous marriage. The only child that lives with us is the one who was born lately. We used to go out to bars, sing karaoke, play pool, watch movies together, go hiking, camping, car shows, play video games, carnivals, festivals, motorbike rides, invite people over, go over to other people's homes and so on. She's gradually but steadily removing the things we used to do together. Do you drink on the weekends? Her first marriage caused her anguish. I realized that she had a truly abusive ex. This is a valid statement. So I limit my drinking to certain occasions, while she entirely abstains. What about outdoor activities? She gained weight and lost her previous level of endurance. She's the thinnest she's been since we married, yet she refuses to go out and do such things with me. Riding a motorcycle. So she persuaded me to sell it after the third year. Movies. She just wants to see scary slash horror movies. Are you into video games? It no longer piques her curiosity. Are you having fun with your friends or coworkers? She doesn't trust anybody she works with and refuses to meet any of my colleagues. What about life? She never takes the initiative and seems to expect me to read her thoughts when she wants to accomplish anything. With the exception of a few playful but grabs here and there, there is absolutely no foreplay. We seldom ever kiss, and when we do, it's just for a few of brief pecks. When we're together, she watches anything she wants while I'm bored or on my phone. I have to wait till she goes to bed to watch what I want to watch. 95% of the cooking is done by myself. Most of the time, she's all right with dining out, whereas I'd prefer a home-cooked dinner that I didn't have to prepare. Cleaning is split around 50 slash 50. Unless it involves any outside duties, then it's all up to me. When it comes to our kid, mother drops them off and gets them up from daycare. Depending on my work schedule, the kid may already be in bed by the time I am home, but on weekends, I advise her to leave the child with me so she can go out and enjoy her day without worrying about the child. I'm supposed to remain up late at night to change and feed our infant one more time before going to bed. As soon as our kid falls asleep, she goes to bed. She gets up about an hour before I do to take care of them. She hates my older kid and is uninterested in the younger one. She behaves at times like Cinderella's stepmother. My children are always making mistakes, and she does not trust them to be near our child. Since we've been married, I've only been around her kid a couple of times, and she's only seen them a couple of times. During a dispute around the holidays, she informed me she wasn't happy. We fought for the next three weeks, and she kept asking whether I was sure I wanted to marry her. Since then, I've done all I can to show her that I want to marry her, but things have gotten to the point where I'm wondering whether I'm truly happy being married to her. The dispute that we had tonight prompted me to write this. It's a little occurrence in my opinion, but minor occurrences mount up over time. Anyway, I was heating our toddler's bottle in the microwave, which she doesn't like since. It heats unevenly. It does, but all it takes is shaking the bottle to disperse the heat, and I spray it in. My mouth to test it before giving it to our infant. I tell her I warmed it in the bottle warmer since it's a lower quantity than I usually do. She becomes enraged and accuses me of lying to her. When she inquired whether I was warming the bottle in the microwave, I said yes and attempted to explain why. She accused me of deceiving her. In my irritation, I asked her whether she microwaved any other food for our kid, and she simply looked at me. She went on to say that she wasn't sure whether I was good at manipulating her or not. I explained to her that I was only attempting to reach a logical conclusion to our debate, and went on to add that all I'm doing is feeding and changing our infant. I told her that I would never do anything that would endanger our kid. She eventually let it go, and I went to take care of our kid. Story 2 My wife of almost six years cheated on me with one of my best friends. Our relationship hasn't been going well for some months, and we've both been aware of it. We simply began slipping into a hole due to the stress of having a newly born kid and not allowing ourselves enough time to be together. For the last month, I'd been feeling really worried since she was always out from home for longer than she claimed she was, and while she was gone, 
she never answered to messages or phone calls. When we were with our friends, she and him appeared a touch too near, a little too friendly. I told myself I was insane, that she would never do such a thing to me. Last Wednesday, I caved into the paranoia I'd been experiencing but was too terrified to question, and checked her text messages. It was all I needed to fit the puzzle together, but I kept telling myself it was all in my brain, so I questioned her about it. She verified my assumptions, and my world came crashing down around me. I'm not going to go into detail about what happened except to say, our relationship hasn't been going well for some months, and we've both been aware of it. We simply began slipping into a hole due to the stress of having a newly born kid and not allowing ourselves enough time to be together. For the last month, I'd been feeling really worried since she was always out from home for longer than she claimed she was, and while she was gone, she never answered to messages or phone calls. When we were with our friends, she and appeared a touch too near, a little too friendly. I told myself I was insane, that she would never do such a thing to me. Last Wednesday, I caved into the paranoia I'd been experiencing but was too terrified to question and checked her text messages. It was all I needed to fit the puzzle together, but I kept telling myself it was all in my brain, so I questioned her about it. She verified my assumptions, and my world came crashing down around me. I'm not going to go into detail about what happened except to say that we've been talking, and for the first time in a long time, we've been talking about everything we've left unsaid between us. Please realize that I was completely unaware of how miserable she had been and how awful a spouse I had been. That, of course, does not condone what she did, but it does help me understand why she did it. So, please, don't help me by trashing what she's done. You don't know all the facts and I wouldn't give them to you if you asked. Just know that I understand how she came to that point. We're going to visit a marital counselor in two days, since that's the earliest we could get an appointment. I wish it could have been sooner. This experience has taught me a lot about myself, including the fact that I still love her and want to be a better spouse to her despite the betrayal. The unfortunate reality is that it is almost certainly too late. While I try hard to trust her when she says she wants to work to see whether this marriage is worth it for us, I suspect she's simply trying to make me feel better by giving me some time to acclimate to the possibility of us splitting up. It makes me furious, sad, and everything in between to think of all the times I could have simply listened to her and heard what she was truly saying, when I could have just stopped being so caught up in my thoughts and the worry and melancholy that was tormenting me. I'm not sure if I'll want to continue this marriage with consoling, I'm not sure how I'll be able to trust her again, and I'm not sure how she'll be able to trust me to be a better husband. I'm just trying to find whatever hope I can to keep pushing on and seeing if this is something that can be addressed. Here's the second part. He was one of my greatest friends, and we spent a lot of time together. He always said that family, friends, and honor were the most important things in life. It being said, it seems that wasn't enough since as soon as my wife approached him for guidance and assistance, he began dropping clues and information about establishing a connection outside of marriage to fulfill those demands. Why couldn't he have been a real friend and come to chat to me about how my marriage was going? I suppose I just need a little additional motivation to get through the next two days. If anybody has been in a similar circumstance, any recommendations for topics to discuss would be much appreciated. I'd appreciate it if you could hold off on any lawyer up or flee as quickly as you can statements. Thanks for listening slash reading Reddit. Edit. My wife of six years cheated on me and our seven-month-old kid with one of my closest friends. We're trying to repair our marriage, but I'm losing my capacity to be optimistic about it. Edit 2. In regards to my buddy, when I found out what was going on, I texted him and essentially told him that if he thought I wouldn't find out, he should inform his so before I did, and that I didn't want to speak to or see him again since he was nothing to me. I haven't heard from him since, and I have no plans to alter that. I just don't have any energy for him in my life anymore, whether it's via physical aggression or simply yelling at him. He's gone and done with me. My wife knows and agrees that as long as things work out between us, they will continue to work out. She has also promised not to contact or visit him while we are trying to straighten things out. So sure, he's the very worst kind of human possible.